Hey, this is Jesse with Create This. Today is Monday, March the 28th, 2016. I just received this communication from HTC Vive yesterday, and it talks about how my HTC Vive is going to be packaged. When I click the link, look up your order online, it still says that it's going to be available or it's gonna be shipping in May. So that's like at least two months away probably. But this kind of gave me a kick in the pants to go ahead and get my Hackintosh Windows 10 dual boot set up, up and running so that, you know, so that I've got it. So I thought I'd record the, uh, the Windows 10 dual boot installation for you here today because I've done it twice before for my son's machine. I thought it would be a valuable video. Okay, so first step, I I like to go to the Microsoft store and get this. There are a number of different ways to get Windows 10. You could get it from, you know, you could buy the USB stick and I think they ship you one. You could probably go go down to the corner of Staples or Walmart or whatever and pick up like a, a box package or something. I'm gonna do the uh, Windows 10 download because I already have a Windows, I think it's like a Windows 7 virtual machine on this MacBook Pro. I can install it to USB that way. So we're gonna buy and download now. I do not want to sign up for Bing Rewards. I don't want to chat. Okay, I've skipped over all the payment detail crap so that you won't have to see that. And let's see, we're on the download link now. I really don't know what the difference is between the different versions here. 10, 10KN, 10 10N, and 10 single language. So we'll just go with 10. Product language, English, 64-bit. And there we go. I have fairly fast fiber internet around here, so we'll see how fast this goes. All right, that wasn't too bad. So now that I've got my ISO file, I think what I have to do is I have to open up my virtual machine and uh, do it that way. How to install Windows 10 ISO to USB. Looks like for me the, uh, the best option is going to be Rufus because that's what everybody seems to be recommending. So I'm going to download Rufus. Create bootable media easily. Okay. Save. Okay, so my device is gonna be my ESD USB partition scheme. All right, so I, I've done this once before with Windows 8.1 and uh, it was very easy to create the bootable media for the USB drive. Unfortunately for Windows 10, it seems a little more complicated. Maybe I'm, it's just because I'm using Rufus. I, I'm not sure really, but um, I've done this a couple of times and I must be choosing the wrong options because I'm not able to boot successfully from the USB stick. So I'm going to, I found this one guide. It said that I shouldn't use NTFS. It says that I should use FAT32 because it supports both BIOS and UEFI. And it says MBR partition scheme, but I'm pretty sure I'm using GPT. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna choose GPT and FAT32 and uh, we'll, we'll see if that works. Okay. Mass storage device is connected. Looks like it's all set up. Let's run Rufus. It's in my downloads. Okay, and this time I'm going to run GPT FAT32. And for some reason that says NTFS. And that says MBR. So I guess I guess you have to set this. You have to set these two uh, drop downs after you select your ISO image, which is very unintuitive. Uh, let's go ahead and start. Okay. 
Okay, so we're going to close this and we're going to eject the media. Hopefully it'll eject this time. I've been having trouble with the USB connectivity on this virtual machine. Sweet. Shut down parallels and eject from Mac. Okay, let's try this out. All right, so this is our system. We've already got Mac OS X installed on one of these drives here. There are two uh, very small SSD drives installed in these bays. Uh, it's already installed on one of these. I'm not sure which one, but I think it's I, th I think it's installed on this one, and I think this one is the 250 gigabyte SSD that we're going to be installing Windows 10 on. They're all attached with the power cables and with the SATA cables, so I really don't have to do anything at this point. But like, there's three drives in here, right? There's there's this one, there's this one which we're going to be using today, and then there's this one. This is just like a general Mac OS X Final Cut Pro storage drive, so we're not gonna worry about that today. Uh, we're also not gonna worry about the Mac OS X drive, except I think right now the Windows 10 drive is disabled in the BIOS because I did a Hackintosh install video, and I think I installed Mac OS X on this one as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the BIOS first thing and we're going to flip flop these. We're gonna disable the 128 gigabyte drive and we're gonna enable the 250 gigabyte drive and then we're gonna install from uh, Windows 10 from USB. F2, okay. Now with any luck, yes. UEFI multi-flash reader, nice. I'm gonna disable legacy USB. All of my SATA drives are disabled, except for the 250 gigabyte drive. And I'm going to set the UEFI flash reader to the number one slot in the boot priority and reboot. And there's our Windows loading spinner. All right, install now. I'll remove this part in post. Okay, I accept the license terms, custom. All right, and I'm gonna delete both of these so that it can freshly partition this with a GPT or GUID partition scheme. Not sure if I should have re removed the USB key this time. No, it looks like this is fine. Okay, this is a third reboot. All right. And now we start the lame Windows 10 feeler messages. Who would have thought that in 2016, a pulsating screen with pixelated text would be how we install software on our computers? It just seems so backward. <laughs> Let's see if I can skip this step for the purposes of this video. Oh boy, here we go again. This is probably gonna look pretty psychedelic when I speed it up. I hope none of you are susceptible to seizures or anything. Okay, so I guess we're all installed. Um, oh, but now it says that it's still searching for a display driver. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to install the NVIDIA GeForce Experience driver. Actually, I'm gonna install Chrome first. Shush, kitty. Okay, and then I'm gonna get rid of IE, and I'm never gonna use it again. I recommend you all do the same. Okay, so GeForce Experience. Now stick around because I've got a tip um, that'll help you if you use the same hardware that I use here. If you followed my, my Hackintosh guide, and uh, you built this machine to my specs with my motherboard and all that stuff, then you know you, you want to know this, so stick around. OK. 
Okay, download driver. Now, in my experience, I've, I've done this on a couple of computers now. In my experience, the game ready driver conflicts with the Intel chipset that ships with this motherboard. Um, this is a, I don't remember the brand, you can look in the, in the description down below. I've got the, the motherboard listed there and all of the hardware. Um, so the thing that we're going to need to do is we're, we're going to get a black screen of death <laughs> and not be able to see anything unless we go and disable the Intel chipset, the Intel graphics chipset in the BIOS. Let's install some stuff first, then we'll go do that. I also want to show you how to lock down Windows 10 so that it um, isn't as much of a security risk and it doesn't eat up your bandwidth. I'll show you that in a minute too. So is it K750? Yeah, it is a K750. That was cool. Uh, yeah, go ahead. This keyboard is uh, solar powered, which is pretty cool. It's, um, it's not my favorite keyboard. The keys don't light up. I really like it when the keys light up on a keyboard, but other than that, it's pretty cool. Logitech K750. Okay. All right, so while it's doing this, let's, uh, let's lock down some stuff. Well, it's installing drivers in the background. I guess that's a heavy duty process. Okay, so the game ready driver is installed. We're up to date, that's good. Close that. There we go. Settings. Okay, here we go. Yes, this is what I'm looking for. All right, so first of all, network and internet. Okay, so uh, let's click on that and then let's go into advanced options, I believe. No, not advanced options. We wanna to go to manage Wi-Fi settings. Okay. Connect to suggested open hotspots. You wanna turn that off. Connect to networks shared by my contacts. No, thank you. Uh, we'll just turn off paid Wi-Fi services as well. Okay. Let's look at privacy next. And we're just going to turn all of these off. Okay. Turn all of that off. And... Make sure I got all of that. Location. Uh, we'll turn location off for now. Off. Okay, next. Updates and security. So here's a big one, advanced options. Choose how updates are delivered. When this is turned on, your PC may also send parts of previously downloaded Windows updates and apps to PCs on your local network or PCs on the internet. So this basically turns your computer into a peer-to-peer -peer file server. How about no? And just to give it some double security, let's change it to PCs on my local network and then turn it off. I hear that updates are re-enabling these settings, so you want to check these things on a regular basis. Okay. That's all I can remember off the top of my head. Windows 10's kind of nasty. You gotta, you gotta really watch what it's doing. It'll try to sneak stuff past you all the time. All right, so next, we're going to, now that we've got our graphics driver installed, we're going to reboot and we're going to enable our second hard drive. Now, as soon as we do this, I think it's going to cause us to boot into a black screen of death in Windows. Okay, that's okay. I'm gonna show you how to fix that. So let's go ahead and reboot. Actually, let's see if uh, let's see if we're up to date first with updates. Okay, so it downloaded a bunch of updates. Now it's going to install them. Uh, just a side note, it says 10:51 p.m. That's not actually the time. I'll fix that later. We're going to go ahead and restart now. 
So at this point, I've removed my USB key. It didn't ask me to, but I went ahead and did it anyway. All right, so I'm back in the BIOS F2. Uh, at this point, I'm going to enable all of my drives. So enabled, save and exit. All right, so it booted into Windows uh, 10. What I need it to do is I need it to boot into Mac OS X because I'm gonna use the Mac OS X bootloader. So I'm gonna reboot and I'm gonna set one of the Mac OS X drives as the priority. Okay, so boot option one is Windows Boot Manager. That's definitely not what I want. So I'm gonna try UEFI. I'm gonna try this hard drive. I'm not sure if that's the Mac OS X bootloader or if it's one of these other ones up here at the top, but we'll try this one first. So we'll set that, save and exit. That's perfect, I've got a Mac bootloader now. All right, so at this point, I've got all of these NTFS volumes. Uh, we can deal with that later. Right now, if I click HFS here, this should boot me into Mac OS X. So let's test that. Yep, that's a successful boot. So let's restart and we'll try to reboot into Windows this time. All right, there's our bootloader. And this time, I believe the one on the very right is the Microsoft boot. Uh, Windows booted into a black screen. Now that's, that's the problem that I was telling you about earlier. And the fix for that is actually really simple. All you have to do is disable the Intel graphics chipset, save and exit. Okay, now we should be able to choose NTFS over here and get a successful boot. We'll just continue. All right, so it wanted to repair that time. So we'll, uh, we'll do a regular NTFS boot this time. And there we go. So yeah, I wrestled with that uh, Intel graphics chipset issue for a long time. Couldn't figure it out. There may be another way around that. Maybe there's an Intel graphics chipset driver that's compatible with the NVIDIA driver, but um, I, I couldn't find it in my, in my searches. So for me, you know, and it's, it's a weird issue because it only happens when you're using the Mac OS X bootloader. If you use the Mac OS X bootloader, you have to disable the Intel graphics chipset before you boot into Windows. Not a huge deal. Uh, the Intel graphics chipset on this board doesn't work in Mac OS X anyway, so you're really not losing anything. You know, just disable it and be on with your life. So that's it. This is how to dual boot on two drives with Mac OS X, El Capitan on one drive, and Windows 10 on the other drive. This is Jesse with Create This. I hope you found this interesting or useful. If you found it interesting, click the like button down below. If you hated it, click the dislike button. It's cool, man. I'm not an expert, I'm only a hobbyist. So if you noticed something that I didn't notice while I was going through this, go ahead and leave me a comment down below. Let me know about it. I'm learning here just like everybody. I've, I've been doing this for a long Long time. I, I got my start in the 90s, I think, early 90s with computers. But uh, and I'm a I'm a software engineer by trade. But that doesn't mean that I install PCs or Macs on a regular basis or anything. So uh, I've still got plenty of room to learn. If you have a question for me about anything that I did here, also feel free to leave me a comment down below. I usually answer most of the the comments. I reply to them pretty quickly. As always, thanks for watching and please subscribe.